Okay, let's have a software demo on Adlab Plus. Adlab is a tool collection featuring general analog design uh, programs. And now let's have the focus on RF design. And I will demonstrate you how the programs work together. And one nice example on this could be matching network design. We have a synthesizer tool here. But you can also use the Smith chart program to design your own matching networks. Yeah, a good starting point is pressing that the button. And it, the program offers you several kinds of net matching networks. And here you see matching with the LC series tank. This works fine if R1 is smaller than R2. As we have here in the example, 1 ohm to 50 ohms at that frequency and if we want to maximize the bandwidth we set the Q factor to zero and here we get the frequency response and the bandwidth typically depends highly on the ratio of the two resistances and you see a simple matching network has not that big bandwidth and if we perform a Monte Carlo analysis you see the frequency shape will vary a bit and maybe in production uh, the bandwidth is not large enough for the demands and if that is the case then you may need uh, another kind of matching network and here are many different popular circuits one of the most advanced circuits is for example here that broadband match which features much more elements, it's more complex but you see it has also quite a good performance and it allows really a broadband matching network design. For example, if you really want to have such broad bandwidth, then it's not so easy to achieve that with Smith's diagram only, because uh, in a Smith chart you only have uh, typically one frequency at the time and for broadband matching you need to look at several frequencies in parallel. Yeah, that's it. How to use uh, the matching network uh, program. As you see here, it uses more or less ideal elements. You can specify the element Q factors like that and of course 1000 is a pretty good element and maybe 100 is more realistic and one result of that is that you have some loss here and uh, so already at that point you can introduce some non-ideality What's even also important is, for example, if you have here that inductor, uh, then in reality it's not only an inductor, it has some series resistance, has some parallel capacitance, all these things, and that will further change uh, the frequency. And at some point uh, we want to go to another program because uh, to introduce more uh, effects. And that is possible by pressing the export button. Let's do that. And you can save uh, the file and let's call it broadband match. Let's save it. Let's close that program and let's start the Smith chart program and load the circuit into the Smith chart. It could look like that. Always when you start a program it will appear as you have closed it and in this case we want to load uh, the circuit, save the desktop, match, open, OK. And here you see the circuit in more details. The, the program features a Smith chart on the right side circuit on the left side and the element values can be modified here in that entry region and if you press and that is one special thing not available in many other programs is you can also have the frequency response and it should look the same as in uh, the other program for synthesis and now let's for example uh, try to make the elements more realistic and Let's look still at the matching behavior. You see, uh, 
we have a transformation from the generator 1 ohm to 50 ohm and due to the loss we do not really reach the 50 ohms but 25 ohms and therefore we have some loss of 1 dB but for the finite Q factor we have to live with that so there is no real workaround on that but for example what is of course the case here maybe if we look into the uh, inductors you will see in reality the parallel capacitance of the such inductor would be typically much larger than one femtofarad, maybe something like 50 femtofarad, and that will change a little bit the frequency response. Let's look at the graphics again. You can also play a little bit with all the things, but you see, luckily, here the behavior is change is not big so we can live with that also for example we have can switch to e series value and you see the matching is not as perfect anymore here maybe the effect is larger uh, we have for example typically a series inductance maybe of 200 picofarad and now you see the change is more severe and all here typically we may need 4.7 and now let's look at the frequency behavior not that good anymore we are now at minus 1.6 db and what we could try is for example we can go to the graphics again have here stay in front option and now we can sweep that element and try to make it better but it's not easy because it's a quite advanced circuit and ah, for example that could be an option for you if you want to have a more flat frequency response then you see it's possible with some tweaking of the elements and I think that is a good compromise here probably that is also very critical element because it's directly connected to the 1 ohm generator impedance and of course one pico henry inductance is not realistic at all and if we for example introduce a more realistic and serious inductance of 200 it will change dramatically the smith chart and we can try to compensate that maybe doing something like that and 12 picofarad would be a standard series element and now let's look at the graphics and you see this real capacitor with some series inductor causes here a resonance very and you have to decide as designer is that acceptable or not maybe you can try to put two capacitors in parallel to reduce the effective series inductance. Now it looks much more acceptable because now the resonance is really far beyond and in principle you can even use the resonance for example to filter out the second harmonic. So that could be a tricky and sometimes it is possible that parasitic elements even help you. Okay, here's maybe another example. Here I expect that the parallel capacitance does not matter really because we are in parallel to the 1 ohm. Let's see if our theory is correct. Zack, as expected, very little changes, so that's fine. And this way you can make the design more and more realistic and also here you can do uh, Monte Carlo simulations both in the frequency domain here or even in the Smith chart you see how the elements vary if you press OK you can go to the nominal design and if you push back the actualize button then you get overlaid results to get a visual impression on the variations. Okay, I think that's it for the moment. Let's close the programs.